Hello, my name is Bill Rankin. I'm an assistant professor at Yale University. I teach history of science. I also have a website about mapping at radicalcartography.net. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about this map I made that shows racial and ethnic segregation in Chicago. I'm going to do three things. I'm first going to walk you through the map and explain the graphics. Then I'm going to talk about why I made the map, how it's different from other maps, and then what this map tells us about Chicago, about urban planning, and about different ways of understanding space. Let's begin. Graphically, my map is relatively simple. It uses colored dots to show where people of different races and ethnicities live. Each dot represents 25 people. The colors are based on people's own racial self-identification on the United States Census. Pink dots show people who identify as white. Blue dots are African Americans, orange is for Hispanics or Latinos, and green shows Asians. The map is based on a lot of data. I used information from about 70,000 individual blocks. The result is a really detailed map that shows just how starkly divided Chicago is, but it doesn't overwhelm you with complicated graphics. Dot maps have been around for more than a century, but they're still relatively rare. Instead, almost all statistical maps show data using solid colors. We see these kinds of maps in all sorts of places. For example, here's a recent map from the New York Times showing ethnicities in Pakistan and Afghanistan, with different colors for different groups. Or here's a map from the 1960s showing languages in South America. Maps like these make a strong visual argument. They make it seem that human beings are naturally divided into relatively homogeneous groups separated by sharply defined boundaries. These colored blobs look just like pastel shaded countries in a school atlas, and by shading each blob based on which group holds a majority, they visually reinforce political ideals of national self-determination and ethnic homogeneity. When the same graphics are used to show city neighborhoods, they end up making a similar argument. For example, here's a map from the Encyclopedia of Chicago showing ethnic neighborhoods. It makes it look like the Polish area is all Polish and the Mexican area all Mexican. Neighborhoods become like miniature territorial states. A similar style is used in non-statistical maps as well like in this poster, where every neighborhood is shown as internally coherent and perfectly delimited. By using dots instead of solid colors, my map immediately challenges the idea that neighborhoods are homogeneous areas with sharp boundaries. My map highlights diversity instead of majority rule, but this means that it also highlights segregation in a much more powerful way. Using dots makes it possible to ask what kinds of transitions actually exist in the city, instead of making assumptions about clean edges. Chicago is especially important in the history of urban statistics. Here's a detail from a map made in the 1920s as part of research at the University of Chicago. The result of this mapping, which again used hardlined edges, was the creation of so-called community areas by the famous sociologist Ernest Burgess. Here are his boundaries. His goal was to define natural areas of ethnic identity that could be used to tabulate census data and help to rationalize urban plan. These community areas have long been criticized as inaccurate since their boundaries have stayed the same while the city has changed. And comparing these boundaries to current patterns of segregation, it's quite clear that the two don't line up. But what my map shows even more clearly is that accurate boundaries could never be drawn. There are some places, like here, where the transition is in fact quite abrupt. But there are two other kinds of transitions as well. There are large gaps of infrastructure or industry, and there are gradients, such as this gradual blurring between white and Hispanic. Given these examples, urban planning with hard edges starts to seem almost irresponsible. It assumes that racial divisions will always be hard and abrupt, and it makes it difficult to imagine, or to encourage, greater mixing. The larger lesson of my project is that we need to think more carefully about how we map social statistics, since the way we make maps influences the way we think and the possibilities for planning and design. Right now, Almost all that planning is done using sharp boundaries, whether it's the boundaries of neighborhoods or the boundaries of countries. What would happen to our political understanding, or to our political interventions, if we made maps without solid colors? Could we have a cartography without boundaries? And that's my biggest goal here, not just to show segregation, but to provoke a different kind of mapping that shows a different kind of world. Thanks a lot.